Hi. Um, Big Tree Tech sent me this uh, Hermit Crab and this H2 Lite. And I thought I would put it on my scalable. Hopefully this should be easy. Um, uh, let's find out. So first problem that I got when I wanted to put a Hermit Crab onto this is that I'm using an MGN9C for my tool head. And the Hermit Crab is meant for a MGN12. Um, so that's an easy thing. I could just um, buy a new rail. I could make a adapter, but given the size of this thing and, and the, uh, the extra stress of a printed part, uh, I just chose to, to uh, buy a rail. So I got that. New rail acquired. Next is the tool head. This doesn't come with a cooler. Um, Big Tree Tech uh, BQ has their own um, option you can print. Um, but I, I, I looked around and I found a couple of options. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep this a CPAP printer or if I'm going to change it into a normal uh, blower style cooling system. So um, let's just go through this and let's see what we end up with. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, I'm getting ready to get my uh, MGM 12 on. It's, it's just holding on, hold on by this one here. The uh, important thing here is that I want this to be level, right? So what I'm gonna do, I've already uh, finger tightened this one, just barely tight. So I can still uh, adjust it slightly. And then I'll grab something to measure with and I'll note that measurement. And on this one, it's four millimeters. Okay, so I have four millimeters here. Now I need to make sure that it's four millimeters over here. And we have our MGN12 on. Next, I'm going to get, grab the Hermit Crab and get the pieces that we need to put here first. So the Hermit Crab comes with three of these. I have one in my office, so ignore that. Uh, we'll, we'll grab this and put it aside. And for now, we're focusing on this part. This is what's going onto our printer. There are the holes for the MGN12 that we put just put in. And there's also belt clamps. Now on my scalable, the belts are flipped, but I'm going to try to use these anyways. So hopefully that'll work. So let's grab these screws, take them off and put this onto the printer. Now, after removing this guy, I'll put that aside for later. I'm just left with this, um, let's call it just a uh, tool carriage. And that'll go on to there, but I'll also be putting my belts in there as well. The uh, Hermit Crab comes with this bag of tools and some wires, and uh, it should be everything that you need to get it mounted to your, to your printer. So for this, I need con countersunk screws and they are here in a little baggie. So let's, uh, I'm gonna do that and I'll see you in a bit. So to get the belts on, um, if you remember, they're kind of um, clamped between this part and the carriage on the rail. Um, so what I've done is I've actually, I grabbed some, some tape, some, yeah, just some, some clear tape and I put the belts in their grooves and I put tape over them so they won't just fall off if I just let go. So hopefully that'll help me keep them there while I'll get the, the rail attached. And there we have it, it's on. Um, there's slack in the belts, but I can, I have a half tensioner zone back here so I can fix that. 
yeah, that's that's a good first step. So let's start looking at wiring because that's being going to be the next part. And now I put the uh, PCB back on and we have our tool plates. They just go on like that. And that's a nice good base to put a tool head. So I'm going to start wiring this up and I'll come back when I figure out how I do this. Uh, this will be different for, uh, for every setup. Um, my scalable is not a perfect example of how you should do this. So in your in the box, it comes with this uh, wiring loom that I'm just going to attach. So just know that this is the end that you put on here. This is the end that you put into your electro electronics to your MCU and whatnot. So let me figure this out. So here's all my wiring done just note all of these different colors so the the first two is the heater that's not um you don't need to worry about plus and minus i, I still do uh just because I, I have lcd and the thermistor it doesn't matter plus or minus um and then there's the fan so you should take a picture of this and note which one is which so it's plus Let's say it's minus, plus, plus, minus on these. So take a picture before you move on. So this is the back of my scalable. I have all the electronics in, in one of these storage containers that I've just mounted to the back. So in, in here, there's the power supply. So this is a two layer uh, box. There's a power supply. There's an intake and an exhaust. And there's a hole for wires down here and a hole for wires up here. And this is um, a little bit of little bit chaotic, but I'm using two different um, controller boards. So my A and B and extruder are, is run by this SKR 1.4, and my three Z-axis motors are run by this uh, Creality stock Ender 3 board. So the um, wiring harness from the Hermit Crab uh, comes with connectors on everything except the, the, the heater, which is expected. It has fer ferrule connectors. So this is just a matter of plugging everything in where you want them to go. So the only thing that I'm not sure that I'm going to use is this one. I think I can use this for um, something in the future, but I don't think I need it. So there's heater and then there's thermistor there's two fans which is my hot end fan and my part cooling fan there's there's an a motor plug and for the um the probe or what i'm using a eq micro micro probe so i'm just going to um plug all of these in and um, let's start looking at the tool heads so I've just been double checking everything with the uh, pinout for the boards and we're good. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a broken fan in there. Now I'm going to put a BQ H2 V2S Lite on this printer. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna take the PCB out of this tool plate and because this is a BQ product they of course um, are compatible so you can put on these two screws and it's attached however we need part cooling and I looked at BQ solution and it attaches to the front and kind of blocks everything off so I found this uh, which is the MAD modular air duct for the H2 system. And uh, this is by Preeti. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. Um, so this attaches to the H2 and gives me a tri-horn 
that looks really nice and it's also modular and because I can I have the uh, CPAP adapter so I'll be trying that out I can also put on a number of different fans on here instead and, and use the same duct so it's a really neat system but because I'm using the uh, Hermit Crab I need this adapter plate I think it goes on like that and then there's an extra ring to give additional support so this should attach to this fan right here so let me um, figure all this out and we'll uh, have a look at it uh, when I get it working and there we have it a nice cool looking um, tool head with the H2 light and this uh, mad modular air duct set setup and I have my CPAP adapter and and there's a clamp for the hose so nice looking kit I hope it performs as well as it looks they had some extra holes up the top uh, I think the first two here are for an ADXL so I'll be checking that out and the last one I'm not sure I just put a heat set on there uh, while I was um, just doing it anyways uh, and I also put in this adapter. I'll link, leave a link to this as well because I'm using BQ's microprobe. So BQ's uh, been supportive and they've sent me enough microprobes to, that I could put on all of my printers. Um, so of course this will get one as well. So the BL Touch comes with cables. However, for this setup, I need a special cable. And luckily in the BQ box, there were a couple of um, cables. And I believe that if I remove that, that one of these, this one is the BL touch cable. So it's got the same connector on both sides and the um, Hermit Crab has the same connector that the, the microprobe has. So this should just be a case of plugging in this one and then plugging in into the microprobe. And there we have it, the complete tool head. So hopefully I should just be able to Snap it on. And that's my tool head. Rigidly mounted. Yeah. So I'm going to go through and double check all my, my connections. And then I'm going to try powering this on. Slight change of plans. Um, I noticed that my CPAP tube is quite a bit uh, bigger than the adapter that came with this system so I'm for now I'm going to do a normal hot end fan and given that this is my ABS printer this is not a huge concern I'll probably use that CPAP setup for something else so while the printer is uh, printing some stuff in the background let me show you how I did the configuration for this so my me going into this, I didn't know how to set up different tool heads, and I looked just quickly online for a way to do this automatically, but there's not one way to do it, I think. If there is, please let me know uh, in the description. But um, for me, this, is, this printer is, will be mostly using one tool head, and then I, I have the option to switch if I'm printing something different, if I'm working on a tool head design. Um, or might even do something else with the tool head later. So for me, having to restart my firm firmware does not matter at all. So what I've done is I've made two different printer configs. So right now it's using this printer.cfd, and then I also have a uh, printer dot printer chc. So what I'll do when I switch my tool head. Um, you can see I have my backup of my H2 and my CHC. When I switch my tool head, I'll save the one that I'm using as the new one. Uh, so the, in this instance, I'm using the H2. So I would delete this. And then 
I will save this printer.cfd as the H2, and I'll rename my printer.chc into my printer.cfd. Um, and then I've also, because my centralized homing macros are slightly different to line up with the axes, I've also made my macros different. So in my chd, it's hashing this homing uh, macro chc, and in the h2 that I'm using right now, it's using the homing macro hc. So this way, when I'm saving offsets, when I'm saving my PID values and all that stuff, it's all getting sent to the same place. Uh, so when I'm changing my tool head, I, I don't have to worry. I just rename that file and I'm good to go on the next tool head. This is the first print after I got Clipper uh, configured, mostly just by guessing and some looking online for uh, the rotation calibration. So I'm gonna let this finish and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we have the uh, first print. To be honest, it looks pretty good. There's some tuning to be done like I said, I just guessed on the values for um, rotation distance. And it's a default Voron Trident profile. So I'm going to spend the next couple of days, do some more printing and um, calibrating. And see if I can make it better. So for you, this is going to take uh, five seconds. For me, it's going to be a couple of days. Now that we have everything together, I thought I would just run you through in real time how I changed the tool head. And I'm also recording my screen so you can see everything. So first things first, I'm just going to yank that tool head off and put the other one on. I've set my minimum temps and maximum temps in Clipper to be super low and super high so that my thermistors won't um, error out. This is not a good thing to do if you leave your printer running while you're not there. Just don't do this. So if you're, um, if you don't have, if you're not using your printer in the same room that you're in, set your limits to something reasonable and just deal with the error. So let's, let's just do that, this real time. First, I'll take off the PTFE. I'll disconnect the tool head. And grab my second tool head. I'll connect it. PTFE, CPAP, and you probably noticed the microprobe has already initiated. And let's head over to the PC. So I'll disable all my motors. I'll go to machine. And I have my printer.cfg, that is for my H2. And I have my printer.chc, which is the tool head that's on there. So I'll rename my printer.cfg to underscore h2. And then I'll rename my chc to printer.cfg. Now, if I move back to the dashboard and I press home, it'll just work. So because I have those two different uh, configs for my different tool heads, all of my setups for offset and all that are still saved. So I don't have to change anything. This just works. So I can do a print, swap the tool head, start a new print. Okay, so um, having two different tool heads, being able to swap them this quickly, I absolutely love it. For me, at least, this printer will be my test bed, my, my most versatile printer. It, it's what the Scalable does best. Have, having the ability to swap between tool heads, 
I might even try something with a laser at some point, maybe even a vinyl cutter. I do have a tool for it. I have an extra one of these, so I might do something fun in the future. Now, the good parts about this. Hermit Crab works great. The mechanism to latch and unlatch, it's super secure. It holds your tool heads perfectly. Uh, there's not much to say about that. The electronics part, fairly simple. They could have left some uh, better cable uh, strain relief, um, would have helped. I'll make something for that um, later on. The documentation for the Hermit Crab is excellent. All the pinouts and everything is there. The H2 Lite, not so sure about this one. Um, it does print well, but only if you're not using retraction. There is some play in the gears. I might have to open this up and have a look at it, uh, but I test everything as is. Um, Performance-wise, it's um, slightly lower flow than a Volcano, uh, not as high flow as my CHC Pro. And the fact that they're using some propri proprietary nozzles uh, makes this not good for me. Uh, you can buy these nozzles at the BQ website. Uh, I would just prefer them to use something stock like a Volcano or a V6. So um, moving forward, this printer will probably not be shown that much in my videos, except if I'm doing a laser or vinyl cutter part for it. I'll do some beauty shots of these two. They're identical. And I also will be showing you a detailed look at this. So um, 